My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. In this video, we'll introduce doors, which are yet another type of map entity. Their main feature is to be an obstacle for the player and uh, to be able to be either open or closed. And you can configure the condition to let the, the player open the door. So uh, let's create a door right away here. You have to choose a sprite as always. Um, let's take this one here, door normal, and keep the default value for now. And direction should be up here, yes. Um, so the direction of the, of the door corresponds to um, the yeah to where the door is located in a standard room. So if you say left, uh, it it would be compatible for a, a door this direction here. So in in this example up here, and door sprites can have, uh, should normally have three animations, closing, opening, or closed. Um, closed is the one that appears by default when, when the door is closed. So here, if I just run this, uh, this is a closed door and uh, there is nothing I can do to, to traverse it. And when it, when it is opening, there is this uh, animation that is played and when it's finished the door just uh, disappears and you can traverse it. And, and if you close it again this animation here closing will be played and when it finishes uh, the closed animation will be played. So closing and opening are for transitions. Closed are f is for the closed state and there is no open animation um, simply because when when the door is open it is not displayed um, and you can specify what will open the door by default is it can only be by a script so explicitly from lua code which will open this door let's call it door a and for example if you put some switch door a switch with a switch sprite um, it will open the door with with some simple code door a switch on activated and we want to open door a so there is a function open indoors and there is also a function closed. So this simple code should work. Let's see. Yes. So what happened here? We heard a sound and we briefly saw that animation that I was mentioning. We saw the opening animation uh, during uh, <laughs> only 100 milliseconds. But you can make multi-frame animations or you can configure your, your sprites uh, La, yeah, as, as you want. So one of the features of, of doors, door entities, <clears throat> is that a sound will be automatically played and an animation will be automatically played. I didn't have to write any code um, to play explicitly the sound. Actually, it was sound um, door open. Yeah, uh, yes, this one, I think, that we heard. And I didn't have to explicitly uh, access the sprite of my door and trigger animation opening and after animation opening uh, remove um, the door and make it so that the hero can then traverse it. So the engine does a lot of things automatically for you. And hopefully this is what you want. <laughs> Otherwise you can always use custom entities to really, really get maximum customization to your for, for your entities. 
um, but we will see them in another tutorial. One important fit, um, things about doors is that their size is 16 by 16 by default, but the sprite can always be larger. So um, here the sprite is actually larger. It, it should not be co more confusing as what we do usually for NPCs or even for the hero. Remember when you have an NPC, uh, more often than, than not, it is also 16 by 16 as far as obstacles are concerned, but the sprite, so the displaying, might be larger. Um, so here, the as you can see, the doctor sprite is larger than than the bounding box that is used for um, dealing with obstacles. So this is the same for this door. The sprite is larger than the 16 by 16 box, <clears throat> which actually means that the eight pixels here and here on both sides are actually walkable. They are actually traversable, so it's a bit strange, you might say. It's not really a problem because um, these are obstacles. So it is true that eight pixels here and here are traversable in in this kind of door. Um, but since our hero is too large, um, he still cannot traverse. But if that's a problem, you can use your you can use some Lua code to change the actual size, so uh, the size of of this entity, and not only the size of the sprite, to actually make it thirty two by sixteen if you want. Um, yeah, the size cannot be configured from here, but from Lua code it always can. Okay, so that's just a detail. Um, very often your doors are actually smaller than that. Doors are really just an yeah, just an, an obstacle actually. So you can use them in actual door configuration like this, but um, oops, like this. But also they they can have any. They, they, they don't really have to represent an actual door, so um, for example, maybe outside, in, in an outside map, you you could do um, some sort of, of rock that needs some special uh, action to be, to be removed, to disappear, and, and let the player uh, pass. Um, but here we want this door, let's say, and the sprite is actually too large, <laughs> so one thing we can do is, well, we could always edit our PNG, I, I mean edit our sprite sheet here to to make a 16 by 16 door, but we could also um, put these tiles here above the door, which is not possible by default, because all static sprites are always uh, below all dynamic entities, so door switches are always above tiles. Okay, if I bring this to the back, it's still above uh, this carpet here. So, if I... Uh, wait, why did it work? <laughs> okay. Oops, you didn't see that. These are static ties by default. And when they are static ties, I cannot put the, the door behind my ties, but... Yeah, you saw the solution. I just needed to convert them to dynamic ties, as we saw in the previous tutorial, and and now I can put these above my oops above my door. That's really just a detail, uh, not really related to doors, but it's always always good to to get used to to these tricks. Um, so here they were already dynamic because. Um, I copy pasted them them from the map from the French version of the tutorial that I just recorded before, so it was actually already correct. Okay, anyway, the size of our door really doesn't matter. What matter is what matters is that we can open it, and sometimes. Doors work in pairs, 
like this. I, let's say we do another one here. Uh, so same stuff we need to convert this to dynamic tiles and to put the to put them in front of the door. Um, there are a few pixels that are wrong here because of transparency. So if I really wanted to make it completely correct, I should also use these as dynamic ties. But I think that's uh, a bit out of scope to this of this tutorial. Um, what I want to show here is that I want this switch to open both doors. I want them to be kind of linked. So let's call them door A1 and door A2. And I want this switch to open them both. So the naive version would do door A1 open and door A2 open. And there is a real problem about that. Not only the fact that we are duplicating code, but you remember that this plays a sound so actually we are, you are, we are playing the, the same sound twice and you might not hear the difference but it actually makes it uh, a bit too loud um, yeah there is a function to use the prefix of our doors you can say I'm um, sorry map open doors and this will open all doors that have this particular prefix door a underscore let's say and place the sound only once okay so that's slightly better than the the previous version mm, it is also possible to save the state of our door and by the way it's the same you can all, all these functions also exist with the close uh, yeah the close variant you can close doors like you can open them it will just play a slightly different sound uh, door closed instead of door open um, okay so door A, one, we saw that, so it opens the door with animations, with sound. You can also use set open true or false to uh, also open it, open it, but silently. It's more to make it already open. So this will not play any sound or any animation. It was instantly open and we didn't hear anything. So it's more for internal purposes if you don't want the player to to see it well to hear it up happening. Maybe in in your uh, in your in, in the inis initialization of your map. And similarly, there is the same uh, similar thing for. Um, using the prefix set doors open door a all doors with this prefix i want them to open them i, I want them open but silently no sound no animation so you can read the documentation but you have set doors open set doors closed and the, and these functions that work directly on, on the door itself, on an individual door instead of on prefixes. Uh, okay, I hope it, this was clear enough. I will remove this code and show other examples. Um, you can configure the, the, the what we call the opening mode of the door. Um, by the way, you can also save them like we do like we can do for chests and the opening mode also is kind of similar to treasure chests except that there are five options instead of only three by script means that only a, a Lua script can open it like we just did by hero means that the hero can simply face the door and 
is allowed to open it by pressing the action key. Similarly, we have a sound which is door unlocked and um, the animation is played. You can configure it to require some save game variable. So as the same game variable has to exist and be different from zero or different or, or, or true if it's a boolean variable. Um, it's similar to treasure chest. So we, we will see some example uh, some some examples of that later. Or you can require the position state of an item. These three ones also exist for treasure chests. And by explosion, uh, your door will open um, if simply if it's in collision with a built-in explosion entity. Uh, that can be used to implement um, weak walls, bomb ball walls. Um, okay, so let's try to make a treasure, which is a key. I only have uh, these five treasures here. I will create oops, a new one. Um, key. But um, yeah, it's it's a unique key. So let's let's call it um, chapter twenty nine key. Um, and the only thing I want is that I won't need, don't need that. I just want to save its position state in some same game variable. So the position state is an integer. It's zero if it, if you don't have the item and it, if it is one, two or three, if you have variants one, two or three and, and so on. So here there will be only one variant position. Um, and then I like just to repeat the name of the item. So it can be saved. And when you set a door or a chest, by the way, with opening mode um, item required, it has to be a saved item. Because if, if it's an item that has no possession state, uh, the engine cannot tell um, if the player has the item. So here I said item required, chapter 21 key. And let's put that item in some chests. Blue to stay in the style of this map. So the chest has this key. Variant number one. Okay. So for now I cannot I cannot open it. I forgot to change the sprites, it will be more logical to make it look like uh, a lock, like this, okay. So I'm trying to open it, it's not working. I just got the key, so sorry it has no sprite, I, I don't have a, a key sprite here. I haven't prepared one, but yeah, it works, almost, <laughs> except I have to open it a second time. Um, so you might want to save the door state here because it's it's a door that uh, needed a key. Usually they are saved. So let's call it um, chapter 29, door A. For example, and if I do it also in, on on the other one, it will automatically update when we open it from from this one. Um, okay, I still want to make some dialogue when when we get the key because <laughs> it's very hard to understand currently. So treasure dot 
the name of the item dot the variant number one. You found the key. So here we assume that it's a unique key in your game. Because um, if you want something more complicated like some consumable keys like we have in Zelda, small keys, um, and that also are specific to each dungeon, you have to, to do more code. But here it's a very simple uh, item that is just possessed or not. It's like a boolean almost. Uh, so it, it will just work as you expect. And if you uh, check remove decrement when opening, it will actually remove the key from your inventory. You will The possession state will be back to zero. Other remark, if you say by hero save game variable required, um, it can be used, for example, if you to verify that the hero talked to some NPC before and or, or that some quest was uh, already achieved. So you can put the name of a save game variable here. And similarly, uh, reset that variable when the door is open. And an interesting fact is actually if you set the name of of a save game variable of your item, it's actually exactly equivalent to what we were just doing before. So this name is the one that we set here, if you remember. The save game variable, so it's an integer here, this one, and it remembers the position state of this key. Okay, I hope this is understandable enough. Uh, what else did I say? Yeah, another detail, you can show a dialogue if to help the player. Uh, let's call it chap 29 door A locked. And let's create it here. This dialogue will be shown if we try to open the door without the required condition. Uh, you need a key to open this door. I'm not sure if it fits. Don't remember the maximum space of my dialog box. Yes, it fits. And notice also that when you, when this dialog is triggered, um, there is a small sound that is played. I think it's probably this one wrong. Um, okay, so that's a lot of information. Again, the main features of the main feature of doors is to easily configure how they can, how we can open it, how we can open it, because the rest is quite easy to do with some simple scripts. Um, the rest is just an animation and removing an obstacle. So. You could almost do it with dynamic ties or more exactly with custom entities if you need um, animations, but uh, that's the idea. What the, re the real added value I would say is this, um, these opening modes. Okay, uh, I guess that's it for this video. If you have any question about doors, or about Solarus, of course, please join our Discord and we will help. And please also share with us your nice creations. Um, yeah, thank you all for watching and that's it for now. Bye.